Pratap Snacks Quarter 4 Investor Conference Call hosted by Systematics Institutional. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star 10 zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Himanshu Nayar from Systematics Institutional Equities. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Nayar. Uh, thanks, Renju, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Pratap Snacks uh, FI24 and fourth quarter call. Uh, from the management today, we have Mr. Amit Kumar, Managing Director and CEO, and Mr. Sumit Sharma, uh, CFO of the company. Uh, we'll start with the opening remarks uh, from the management, post which uh, we'll take up uh, Q&A. So I'd like to hand over to the management now. Uh, over to you, Mr. Kumar. Thank you, Manju. Good afternoon to all the participants, and thanks for joining our Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call. I trust all of you have reviewed our earnings document, which was shared earlier. We have reported a resilient performance in Q4-24, despite the challenging macroeconomic conditions and persistent inflation which have impacted consumer behavior. We reported sales of 387 crores in Q4. Urban areas continue to outspend rural areas during the quarter. However, there are initial signs of revival in rural spending on a sequential basis. Two key highlights of the top line performance are maintaining of the leadership position in the excluded effects category, as well as continuing to drive robust growth in the Nankin category, which remains a primary focus area for us. These accomplishments have been driven by initiatives such as range selling and expanding of retail reach. I am most pleased to share the external EBITDA performance in Q4-24. EBITDA was Rs. 35.5 crores, a robust 87% increase compared to Q4-23. We have delivered an EBITDA margin of 9.1% in Q4, the highest in the last 20 days quarter. We have been very focused on our margin performance and undertook many steps to structurally improve the margin. Additionally, a decline in some input prices coupled with process optimization contributed to improve profitability. The improvement in EBITDA has also filtered down into PAS. In Q4, PAS reached Rs. 12.4 crores, marking a 30% year over year increase compared to the adjusted PAT of Rs. 9.5 crores in Q4 23. Please note the one off in the PAS last year, which are explained in note one off slide 32 of our investor presentation. If we look at the full year performance, revenue was 1610 crores in 24 compared to 1642 crores last year, impacted by the software demand environment. However, there was much progress on improving our profitability as the company reported its highest ever annual EBITDA of Rs. 141 crores in 24, which is higher by 126% on a year to year basis. Throughout 23 24, the EBITDA margin was consistently above 8% in each quarter and we have reported a margin of 8.7% for the full year, indicating the structural and sustainable improvement in margin. Thus, margin enhancement is due to compression of the distribution structure over the last two years, as well as a lot of efforts on process improvement, cost optimization, and yield enhancement. There has been some support from lower prices of certain inputs. Profit after tax has grown to 52x from 1 crore to 52.1 crore in 24 on a like for like basis, despite higher depreciation. In light of this performance, the board of directors has recommended a dividend of 40% per share with a face value of rupees 5, amounting to rupees 2 per share. We are taking several steps to accelerate growth. This includes the implementation of sales growth automation, which is already rolled out across a substantial proportion of our market. We now have access to richer and real-time data, which will lead to improved productivity of sales team, identification of gaps, and also help to improve the overall strategy and decision-making ability. This will be extended across all locations this year. We are augmenting our sales channels by entering into modern trade and quick commerce channels, which will complement our comprehensive presence in traditional distribution channels. We are already onboarded into some of the leading supermarkets and hypermarket chains and are having advanced exchange of discussion with several good commerce platforms. In terms of our product portfolio, we will look 
to continue to perform well in extruded snacks with focus on pellet snacks. Another strategic initiative remains increasing the share of numkin in our revenue mix. The initial progress on increasing numkin will receive further momentum from our initiative of range selling, save both automation and entry into modern trade and swift commerce. Further, we are undertaking efforts towards more comprehensive coverage across select markets and we look into address pockets of under penetration. We believe this will help us to further enhance our reach. We are also working on including some premium offerings under the better for you range of products. This will help us to drive our objective of large pack size and will also benefit from our entry into modern trade and good commerce. As part of the ongoing upgradation and enhancement of product range, we plan to launch new flavors such as sizzling hot, which are a spicy flavor across product categories of extruded effects and potato chips. These are some new offerings lined up for launch in the extruded effects and nymkin categories. We have recently commissioned new facilities in Jammu and Rajput. The Jammu facility will help us to expand our reach in that region, especially across JNK and Punjab. In Rajput, we will be manufacturing Palahari mixture and peanuts, which will help to expand our product range. Looking ahead to FR25, we are optimistic given the initial signs of improved rural demand, the projections of a normal monsoon will provide further momentum to this trend. We are confident that our initiatives across sales force automation, range selling, entry into modern trade and food commerce, as well as augmentation to our traditional product portfolio, will help us to drive expected growth in top line. On that note, I conclude my remarks and we can open the floor for questions. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Dipain Shankar with a trust line. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks a lot for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on strong profitability and return ratios. Uh, so firstly, from my side, uh, so what are the challenges uh, we face uh, in uh, reporting the strong double-digit growth in uh, uh, revenues? And how do we see uh, industry growth uh, uh, per se in the past year? So if you see overall the rural market and the urban market with a low estate income has been a big problem for all the companies. We don't have the exact number of our competitors, but there has been, there is definitely there has been pain for most of the companies in rural segment and the lower estate income. But seeing the current scenario and the months which have passed on, the things are improving a lot. We think that this year probably we can deliver double digit growth. Okay, okay. And uh, sir, can you please uh, throw some light on uh, each uh, categories uh, like extrusion and then potato, uh, sweet uh, and numpkin se uh, segments? How, how do we see uh, growth growth over there? So extruded segment, we are the leader in the extruded segment in the country and we feel that most of the growth in the near future should come from extruded snacks, mainly pellets and numkin category. Numkin and yellow diamond have done very well for us for the last year also. With almost zero growth also, the numkin category grew almost 16% for the year. The contribution was 16%, right sir, or growth? The growth, growth in the game. The contribution, exact number of products wise, the contribution also 16 percent. Contribution is also 16, uh, but the growth for yellow diamond Namkin. So Namkin is uh, yellow diamond and our uh, two kind of portfolio. Our is primarily a regional Namkin uh, targeted to Gujarat market, and YD Namkin is more national variant. We are driving the range selling, so the outlets uh, we are available, but the Namkin range is not available. We are pushing uh, uh, Namkin on. Uh, existing outlets, which is helping us to, to drive the Namkin growth. Okay, so so if you are seeing such strong growth in uh, Namkin, so, so any other segment which is uh, facing negative growth uh, as such? I think that all other sectors were basically they were okay, they were muted growth, 
because volume wise we were at zero growth last year so not much significant difference but namkeen has done better than all other products okay so okay. coming year we are looking more growth from the acute respiratory and namkeen okay and how about this uh, sweets portfolio sir we we had a higher uh, uh, growth ambitions on the sweet portfolio uh, earlier so are are we still uh, uh, hoping uh, sweet portfolio to increase substantially in the coming years sweet portfolio has a, seen a muted growth we don't see any much significant growth in the sweet segment right now okay okay i'm different format for the sweet segment but not not as yet okay okay and how how about this uh, off take on uh, larger packs uh, uh, we were discussing last year sir so uh, is that uh, segment uh, contribution improving overall sir yeah that that sales contribution is also improving and with uh, getting entry into modern trade that contribution is substantially improved in the times to come we have got listed ourselves on the dmart and reliance and there we are selling a 50 rupee pack compared to the 5 rupee pack what we sell with them okay so what is its uh, contribution currently entry, with entry into modern trade and back book with commerce i think the large uh, mrp pack contribution will definitely increase okay so what is its contribution currently and what was it last year sir So it's different for different segments. I think potato chips is still close to 25-30 percent, the more than five rupee pack. For extruded snacks and other packages, it is mainly five rupee only. So overall contribution is okay. probably close to 12-13 percent, and I think that can go up to 25-30 percent in two years time. Okay, okay. Thanks a lot, sir. All the best. I'll join back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Devan. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of uh, Prakash Kapadia from Spark PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, a couple of questions from my end. Uh, you know, typically, what has been a rural and urban mix to total sales? If you can share that uh, in FY24. Uh, and you know, secondly, Pepsi is trying to change the base oil from palm oil to a blend of. sunflower oil and palm oil so what impact does it have on the industry and a player like us and what do you think will be the consumers reaction i have few more questions so let's should you... i continue or will you take yeah. them so let let me answer the first two questions and probably we'll go to the third and fourth one sure. on the mix side it's almost 50 50 percent for the rural and urban market not much different but in urban market also since we are in the five rupee segment category we are majorly catering to lower strata income people so i think there was pain there also last year which we seen is improving from uh, this current year on the oil side basically we current use palm oil and cotton seed oil and uh, we believe they are the one of the best oils for the frying medium across the world but since their consumer behavior by edge don't when pepsi launches and the tritolay launches and they advertise a lot i think uh, we will have few varieties in sunflower also in times to come but i don't see any health benefit out of coming out of it okay so the positioning need not be a healthy product to what you are saying yeah i don't think so yeah so there is lot of debate going on across the world on the quality of oil i believe <laughs> No, most of the oils are not that good for health. Yeah, yeah, understood. And you know, if you could help us understand the PLI scheme, you know, there was some delay last year. What were the challenges? As of now, you know, where are we in terms of the PLI scheme? And if you could help us understand the road ahead on that. And you know, in your remarks, you mentioned about the JNK plant. So. uh given that it is started what is the annual benefit what kind of capex we have done when do you know some of these benefits come to the pnl if you could give some insights that will be helpful sure so pli there was an obligation to invest uh, almost uh, 105 crore for capex and the deadline was to complete that investment by end of uh, march 24 
studio completed our investment uh, before the deadline and we commissioned two new plants and there was some brownfield uh, capex. So with regard to that investment, we have commissioned two new facilities. One is Jammu and second is uh, the new unit in Rajkot. Uh, we need to uh, achieve some sales threshold to get the PLI benefit. Uh, so we are aspiring for that. We are targeting uh, to achieve that number. The benefit is available till FY27. Uh, so another four years, the benefit will be available. Uh, as far as Jammu is concerned, Jammu plant was commissioned by end of March and uh, it's, it's operational. The overall capacity for Jammu facility is roughly about 160 odd crores at a full capacity utilization. The idea to use Jammu facility to develop the nearby market uh, like JNK, Punjab and uh, Himachal because those markets uh, historically uh, uh, were not that strong for us because of logistic uh, issues. We were not able to supply earlier. So Jammu facility will help us to uh, maintain the consistent supply to these markets. The products we are planning in Jammu are extruded. Uh, so pallet, uh, pop and rings and uh, chulbule will be manufactured at Jammu location. And the rest of the items will be supplied from other locations. So we will also have a hub in Jammu to maintain the full range of all the products. In addition to PLI benefit, there are another benefit linked to Jammu investment. Uh, Jammu total investment was about 22, 23 odd crores. So as for the Jammu incentive scheme, uh, whatever is the eligible investment, uh, uh, we will be able to get 300% of that investment. So as for our calculation, the eligible investment is about uh, 18 to 19 crores. Uh, so three times, uh, that means about uh, 56, 57 crore kind of benefit will be available over the period of 10 years. And this is this is uh, uh, basically the GST linked incentive. So whatever GST is charged in the invoice uh, will be getting equivalent to that benefit subject to the maximum cap of uh, the amount which I mentioned. Okay. And, and you know, you mentioned there is a sales threshold for the PLI scheme. So how does that work? Is there a absolute number or a certain growth number which you have to achieve year on year till FY27? So there is a there is a kegger uh, which has to be maintained um, uh, over the base year. So the base year was FY20 and uh, we need to maintain at least 10% kegger from FY20. So that, that's how the threshold sales is calculated. All the products are eligible under PLI and RK except the potato chips. Potato chips is not eligible under the PLI scheme for the incentive benefit. Okay, okay. So uh, if I understand this correctly, going forward from FY25, some of these benefits will start accruing to us. Yeah, that is what we are targeting. Okay, fine. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Arman with Blue Sky Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sir, before we told that we will be targeting around 500 crore top line, however, in Q2 and install, we clarified that it may take uh, two more quarters. So already we are on Q3 and Q4 already have been over. So what's the timeline over there? When can we see a top line of 500 crore down? That is my first question. And the second question, which you have already answered, but just wanted to clarify once again that uh, like PepsiCo, one of the previous participants has asked about the palm oil and sunflower blend oil. So our stand is clear that uh, that will not, uh, that doesn't hold any other health benefits. So what, what we are using is the best, what can be possible. Is that so, sir? So I don't think we can say it's the best. The, all the oils have different kind of attributes and people see it with a different lens. For frying medium, stability-wise, we believe palm oil is the best oil available in the world today. And all the major players in the country use only palm oil. Though during winter, we have to use cotton seed oil because of the low freezing point for palm oil. If they start using sunflower and they market it, I think it might give a different tangent to the market. So we are doing few trials at the laboratory to see what can be done. 
so current sunflower oil available in the country not good for uh, frying so you need a different kind of sunflower oil for to use to be used in frying okay on the first question of revenue we haven't hit that mark basically what we said last time but uh, with the current 10% growth momentum what we see for this year hopefully this year we should see this number in public q2 or q3 and and this margin levels are sustainable sir at this level since we are already increasing our share of the nankin segment which are competing the better for us so what kind of margin we can assume going forward i think uh, the margins are sustainable on a on a full year basis however there will be some ups and downs in the commodity pricing so uh, the quarterly you may see some fluctuation but uh, for the full year we are confident that uh, these margins are sustainable because over the period we have done a lot of structural changes uh, in terms of uh, compressing the distribution network in terms of uh, other uh, process reengineering including the change in recipe uh, resizing the packet resizing the the corrugated boxes etc so those are permanent in nature so those are uh, still with us so for long term for a full year basis yeah we are confident but there may be some uh, variation on a quarter on quarter basis subject to change in long term sizing okay got it thanks sir thanks thank you thank you next question comes from the line of viraj mahadevia with money grow india please go ahead hi sir congratulations on the operation efficiencies extraction in your business um how are you so confident about the sales hitting 500 uh, crores per quarter what are the specific initiatives you've taken to drive sales across categories for the organic business and incrementally what will come from the jammu and kashmir plan so, uh, on the first question basically if you grew by 10% the sales is almost close to 1860 crores if you can grow better than that probably then q3 we might be able to hit that number of 500 If you see historically, both Q3 and Q3 are normally better than Q1. Right. The initiative what we have taken is basically getting deeper into distribution, and with the Jammu facility, we are targeting to cover whole of Punjab, Sri Nagar, and Jammu market, which was currently very weak in those markets because it was very difficult to supply from Indore and other locations. So with the more focus on Jammu plant and two different products from Gujarat and getting deeper distribution. we might be able to hit that number what can so jammu plan generate in terms of sales at the peak uh, utilization jammu can probably deliver sales of 10 crores a month but there would be some sales which basically we are currently getting from hisar and karnal plant which are the third third party operation so some of that production might shift to jammu but the, we can easily get sales of 10 crores per month from the jammu plant understood thank you thank you next question comes from the line of paviksha with mk ventures please go ahead oh uh, yeah hello sir congratulations on good rate of margins so my question is what kind of uh, new business initiatives are we looking for the next one or two years can you just elaborate on some of the initiatives yes yes So first, basically, as I told in my opening remark, also, so two things, major things, what we have done in last one and a half months, that we did get enrolled into ourselves into the modern trade and e-commerce. We have already started supplying in Reliance and Demart, and we got enrolled with e-commerce all the major three, four big agencies. That supply should probably start within a month's time from now. So these two initiatives, plus we are also targeting to get into export market. We recently got few orders from the Middle East from the Oman market. and now we are getting into there is a conference in dubai in september we are covering that conference also and we are hopefully with these three initiatives we should get a definitely decent number for the in a year's time plus basically in the current market where please yeah no please bhai plus this these are the new initiative what we are taking plus basically we are also targeting uh, to get deeper distribution with more range telling in the similar markets like the if you see the our extruded snacks is available almost most of the outlet where we covered but if you see the namkeen it is still available only in 25% of the outlet so if we can make namkeen available in all the outlets 
it can definitely increase sales considerably. If suppose theoretically we are available into 2 million outlets, that's for 18 million number. Out of that 84% outlets, they have uh, extruded flex. Only 35% has monkey uh, chip uh, available with them and 25% has monkey available with them. With using technology and getting into SFB and DMS, if you can increase this number, sales can increase considerably. Right, sir. So, just uh, so what kind of opportunity does export have? Like we can see an export market. Like export, I think what kind of I think probably in a year or two it can go anywhere between 50 to 100 crores. Great, sir. Congratulations. That's our first take on it. We have just started this thing, probably we have to learn a lot in export market. We have just started this. But I think the potential is to that to you now. Great, sir. Congratulations, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Al Siha with Envision. Please go ahead. Hi, this is Alicia, um, not Alcina. Um, so, a uh, couple of quarters back, we were talking about, um, you know, with cooling off of RM prices, uh, local players have become more aggressive, um, and with demand being weak, it was impacting our growth. So, any um, comment on what is the competitive intensity like, and is there particular segment, say, potato chips, which is witnessing uh, maybe more competition than, say, Namkeen, or any uh, comment or color on that? I think the competition, there's a lot of competition in the market, no doubt about that. But personally, in our few markets, we have seen more competition in the chip segment. A lot of plants basically come out in UP, basically they are trying to sell very cheap. But since the commodity prices have already gone down from last one year, now they are increasing a little bit. I think the competition intensity won't increase from here. So if you see AC Nielsen number, the local competition has taken almost 3% market share in last one and a half year. And I think that, that would be the peak, according to me. And why do we feel that maybe, you know, with these lower prices and because they've also set up the capacity, they'll try to expand a little bit. Uh, they can't maybe take away some of more, some more of this? Hello? 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 Please go ahead with the question. Uh, hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, Alicia, you are audible. Just give me a moment. Yeah. Uh, speakers, uh, can you go ahead with the question? Yeah. Okay, Alicia, we got disconnected. Can you please repeat the question? Sure. So I just wanted to know that you said that co local competition say come three percent market share in one and a half year. Um, is in the mm. scope for them maybe to expand a little bit and continue to hit us at the lower price point, uh, or maybe where distribution speak for the rest of the market, and they can eat away a little bit more into everybody's market share. I think it is difficult. If you see history also, part history also, whenever the regular prices comes down, all the smaller players will pop up everywhere across the country. But they have that certain level, and I think they have already reached that level. Probably they can go up by 0.5 percent or more. But I don't see any significant change from here in the local competition. That's my take on it. And how is the comp uh, competition in Namkeen? Because I believe last time also people saying that Namkeen the competition is um, is aggressive. The competition is definitely aggressive in Namkeen, but with the, our presence available in the market, I think there is a lot of scope. In spite of zero volume growth last year, we grew Namkeen by 16% the ID Namkeen. And currently, we are only available in 25% of the outlets where yellow diamond is available. So the B slack outlet is the 5 slack outlet where we take Namkeen and Pocha Pai. I think there is enough scope for us to get Namkeen at a bigger range. And any aspiration or target that, you know, where do we expect now that we've completed the rejig of a distribution uh, network or model, this uh, 20 lakh um, outlets that we're present in, where do we expect this to go? And what outlet reach can Namkeen reach, say, by the end of the year? I think we can definitely increase the outreach with the 50% for Namkeen by the end of the year. And overall outlets basically we are already on 2 million outlets or 2.2 million outlets. It is much better for us to get deeper into these outlets. 
Okay, understood. So the aim is to basically get deeper into the outlet rather than increasing the outlet with help of SFA and DMS. And uh, with the Jammu and Kashmir plant, we are saying that it will help us uh, uh, cater to the demand of uh, Jammu Kashmir, Punjab, and maybe a little bit more of the north. Will that not also lead to some amount of expansion and distribution reach, or this is covered in the 2.2? I, I think they're almost covered in two points. There will be a slight increase, but the fo company focus is more to get basically more of more sales from all the current outlets. Okay. 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 Best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Natik with An Anvil Alpha. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so my question is, uh, you mentioned about uh, you know entering the Oman market. Can you talk a little bit about uh, you know uh, which are the other countries that we are looking at, uh, you know, apart from Oman? Yeah. So the Middle East, basically, the crowd, there is a lot of Indian diaspora in the Middle East. So one of the buyers just came from Oman, which is a particular plant, and they give out of a few containers. So they are talking to few more companies in Middle East who can take take distribution of our products. The only problem in export is basically that you need a lot of time in labeling and all those things. But I think we can open all our Middle East countries in probably in next six months time. But this is uh, main uh, focus is uh, sorry. in our own brand, Yellow Diamond. Oh. In our own brand, Yellow Diamond only. Okay, okay. So uh, my second question is regarding, uh, you know, deeper penetration in uh, Jammu, Kashmir and Punjab from our Jammu facility. So I just wanted to ask, oh, <coughs> sorry, uh, what would be our current, uh, you know, uh, sales number in these, in this region and, uh, you know, you mentioned it could go until, uh, go up to 160 at peak, but, uh, you know, what was the uh, current uh, contribution? I think the monthly sales of JNK, Punjab, and Himachal market put together is close to three and a half crores currently. Which can go up. And uh, we start, uh, yeah, probably it can double from here. The 10 includes basically that Hisar and Karnal plant, which we have manufacturing a few things from Hisar and Karnal plant. So uh, some products will be shifted from Jammu to there instead of getting the 3P operation because we already have the facility. But in the current scenario, probably we can double, it will take some time, but we can double the sales from in these three states. Sure, sure. There's a monthly sale, what uh, was I was talking about. Got it. Uh, my last question is, uh, you know, you mentioned that uh, Namkeen is currently present already in 5 lakh outlets out of, say, 20 lakh outlets. So my question is, uh, uh, why is it uh, taking, I mean, I've heard this on uh, previous calls also, so uh, why is it taking us longer to, you know, make it to, say, 8 or 10 lakhs, you know? What, what exactly is taking uh, time? So there are two things basically. For Namkin, if you go into different regions, the taste changes quite a bit. So if you go to South India and East India, probably the flavor changes, the seasoning changes. So we are developing through seasoning from the local market. Secondly, we are producing Namkin only in Indore right now. So distributor from Indore to Guwahati and Kerala is not that easy. So probably it is taking more time. The first step is to get the product right for the different markets and then probably get from Indore first and then start some production in Eastern India which is giving very good attraction right now. Because all other products are manufactured at many different locations, like chips is manufactured at four or five locations, pellets is available from 10 locations. The proximity of production to market plays a very important role. So that, these are the two reasons we have not been able to put them in across the country. Great, thanks, that's all from us. thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Kunal Patel with Equaligence Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Yes. So my first question is regarding PLI scheme. Uh, what is our base for FI25 PLI benefit? FI20... If I 25 you're asking or if I 20 the original base uh, on which the uh, no, so so to avail benefits for uh, for financial year 25 what is our base revenue base on which you have to grow and yeah. uh, to get the benefits yeah the revenue base for FI 25 is about uh, 1575 crore 
excluding potato chips. Okay, and uh, we need to grow by 10% uh, on that, right? No, no, this is the base. This number, this is the threshold. Okay, this is the threshold. This number uh, is to be achieved. This number is to be achieved. Okay. So, if I exclude uh, potato chips revenue from our base, uh, which is 1610 crores. So our revenue is close to around 1240 odd crores. Mm -hmm. uh, so you are saying from 20, uh, 1240, we have to achieve 1575 to again the benefits. Is that right? The calculation is right or not? Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. So essentially 1600 odd crores revenue, uh, assuming there is no growth on potato, should reach 1900 odd crores uh, in FI-25. Yes, yes, mathematically that is correct. Uh, so where do you see this growth coming from? 300 odd crores, incremental. So, uh, and that's when I is the major growth that we were expecting from extruded effect pallets and numkeens. These are the two categories which things we can grow maximum for us. But most of the categories are not growing uh, more than 10, 15 percent, 15 odd percent. Then how how we are going to achieve 25 percent growth? Uh, so I think the exact number is not 25 percent. The growth in the sector probably would be close to 20 percent. We don't have the exact number right now. It should be close to 20 percent. And I think if with all the initiative what we are taking, we are trying definitely to hit that number. So we are certainly running for this and we are aiming for this and we are working in the direction and uh, we will accrue incentive only at the end of the year once we are able to hit that number. So we are not accruing on a quarterly basis like what we did earlier. I'm just trying to understand your previous statement where uh, you were assuming uh, 500 crores of top line in Q3 and Q4 to come. So if Q3 and Q4 base is 500 crores, then you have to grow significantly higher in Q1 and Q2 for this year to achieve 1900 crores of revenue. Is this growth achievable? So I think as I said earlier, basically we are very, very confident of the double digit growth. If we can grow by 18 to 20 percent, we're definitely getting for it. We can't commit right now. We are definitely gunning for it. Okay, okay. Uh, but coming to my second question, which is on margin. So, how much more operational benefit is uh, benefit is available from all the initiatives we have taken over the last uh, few years, assuming stable oil, oil prices? So, we are at 9.1 percent of this quarter. So, what should be our exit uh, uh, margin for FI25? I am not uh, uh, coming specifically on FI25. I'll I'll more give you some color on uh, what it will look like in next two years, three years time on a sustainable basis. Uh, so there are few few areas where still we see some potential that includes uh, distribution uh, channel cost. Uh, initially, the channel cost was higher when there was a super stockist, and when we shifted from three tier to two tier distribution model, we increased uh, margin for our existing distributor because uh, we didn't want to have any any hiccups uh, during the transition. So that potentially is available and over the period, the channel margin for the distributor will be reduced. So that will give some uh, realization benefit and that will also help uh, improving the EBITDA margin. Uh, so that one lever is available, especially on the distribution channel side. The, another lever is available in the operational cost. There are some line items where we are driving uh, some efficiency program and cost cutting program. We are also taking uh, external help to drive this program, and those include uh, uh, essentially the labor cost, uh, logistic cost. Logistic is a big cost, which is about seven, seven and a half percent of the overall revenue. Uh, stores and consumable spare consumption. So these are few line items, uh, especially in the operation side, where we are driving the, the cost cutting and efficiency drives. So this will help us to get another uh, two to three percent savings uh, over the next two years' time. Uh, okay, and uh, finally, uh, sir, uh, we we are talking about export. So, does export also uh, get included in this PLI or not? Yes, that is included. Okay, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, what is our current utilization capacity utilization? 
utilization level is about uh, 55% after having the additional capacity in Jammu and uh, Rajkot unit 2. So okay. there is there is there is enough headroom available to drive the growth. So I don't think the capacity would be a constraint. And going forward, you won't have any significant capacity for next two years. So I think the the investment phase is over, which is already in place. Uh, okay, okay, got it, got it. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Tushar Bora with MK Ventures. Please go ahead. Mr. Bora, please go ahead with your question. Sorry. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, a couple of points quickly. Uh, we ex highlighted the initiatives that we want to do on modern trade and uh, some of the new uh, commerce uh, you know, uh, delivery sites. Can you just explain a little bit more qualitatively what uh, you know kind of initiatives we are taking there and what kind of revenue potential it has, even if it will take maybe a few quarters to achieve it, but what kind of potential we think this channel has. Secondly, what kind of growth momentum we can hit uh, if we uh, you know, if we are able to take the, let's say, double the penetration of uh, outlets for an team, uh, and, and also with the efforts on modern trade side, what kind of numbers can come from there also? First, on the modern tech, if you talk about basically, if you see in the country, 60 70 percent volumes come from only two guys, DMART and Reliance. We were basically not working with them. Probably we stopped working with them last year when the prices increased and there was a few problems at our end. We have just opened these two outlets. DMART has started in Indore and Reliance has started in few locations. I think the potential could be close to 50 crores a year in these two outlets. The e-commerce, the, all, all the Blinkit, Swiggy, and Swiggy Instamart, Blinkit, and Depto, they're already in the process of registration. I'm not very sure about the number of numbers we can achieve from those places, but probably it could be 50 lakhs a month. 50 lakhs a month to start with. Most can come from uh, Reliance and Demart. Yes, please. So you think 50 lakhs a month to start with? Is, is the immediate potential. Have to start with from LinkedIn and all these areas. Yeah. The potential could be much bigger. It's still to be explored, but I think the potential with uh, these two guys, basically we have already seen earlier, is much, much bigger. Okay. In the modern trade, and, reliance and demand. And uh, if we are able to double the penetration for Namkeen, or, uh, you know, let's say we 50% also, if we are able to increase, like you highlighted for this year. Uh, how much the, does that impact the, the sales on a full year basis? If we increase, if we increase the 50% outlet in Namkeen, it should give additional uh, sales of 4 to 5%. On the overall piece? And for the whole company. On the overall base, right? On the overall base. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, you said that uh, for us to increase penetration in the teams, uh, uh, we have to get the product placement right in terms of the seasoning and uh, taste, etc., as well as uh, uh, be able to ramp up manufacturing. Uh, do we have any timelines on both these initiatives and, and whether it is going to happen all at one shot or in a staggered way? What is the strategy that we are adopting, sir? So product basically we have already developed the product for the next two, three months we'll launch the product across East India and South India because normally North and West India taste is very similar. Once the sales moment and get up in Eastern India, I think the second facility of Namkin probably we might have to put next year in Calcutta for the Eastern market. It will be very difficult to supply continuously from here, seeing the distance from here to Guwahati. So getting the right product at the right time is not easy. Okay. Uh, are we not looking at any Namkeen manufacturing in the southern southern states, sir? Not, not, not yet. Because southern market is very small for us in Namkeen category right now. East has grown quite a bit last year. So probably we start with East India. We are already talking to one or two 3P facilities in Eastern India. Let us ramp up the Eastern India and then probably we can look for the southern India market for Namkeen. Right, sir. One last, if I may. 
uh, we in the presentation we mentioned uh, you know some certain products uh, being pruned out as well as uh, some new product innovations uh, uh, that we are working on. Uh, if you could maybe share more details, sir, around the same. So in the extruded snack segment, we have added few products, something like uh, a crazy product, basically in the tomato flavor type. We have added few different flavors in potato chips and chilgule. If you see the trend worldwide across, basically the chili chilies in Vogue across the world. So we launched three new flavors in the potato chips. That is chili cheese, uh, cheese flavor with some chili, Korean and Naga, Naga chili flavor. Similar thing we did with chilgule in two flavors. So these are the product range what we have added in the chili range in across the category. Secondly, we are working on some few healthy products, they are better for you products, in which we are doing makhana. The product has already been developed. So this, this product like makhana, protein puff, and peanut puff, which can go into modern trade also, e-commerce also, and export also. So these are the two range we are currently working on. For the regular market, the lower estate income and the BCD market, we have developed this chili flavor and few flavors uh, for modern trade, e-commerce and export market. Mainly in Makhana, uh, protein puff and uh, peanut flavored puff. Product has already been developed, it's still working on packaging. Probably it might take another two months to put this product into, into the market. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. I'll try and thank you for more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Harsha Shah with Pandan AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, if I'm not wrong, the, PL, the PLI base for FY26 is FY22, right? Not FY20, for FY26. Yes, yes absolutely right. Uh, so FI, for FY26, the base would be FY22. So if our FY22 sale of eligible product was similar to FY20. Because of COVID, there was no growth, uh, unfortunately. So for FY26, the base will remain same. What is for FY25? So how much so do we that, that have much for in FY26 to be eligible for PLI? Just like you gave 1575 crores net of... Uh, almost similar, uh, almost similar number. Two, two, three crore here and there, but uh, otherwise largely it's a similar number, like FY25. Similar number. Close to 1575 crore. Yes, close to 1575 crore. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Arman with Blue Sky Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, uh, just a bit of clarification because once before when I asked about the margin, um, and when told about uh, like 8.7% what we have maintained for the full year will be maintained for the current year. However, when another participant asked the same question, he told, I can't commit on that, but however, for two, three years, you are seeing 200 or 300 basis points improvement. So uh, I just wanted to clarify, what's our take on margin? Is this level of 8.7% a take maintainable? Also, when we said that our higher products, like uh, maybe for a uh, large packet, for which we have currently 12% share, which will increase in eventually in two years to around 25%. Doesn't that add more to our margins? And can we assume that 8.7% is a base case that continuously on overall basis for the full financial year, it should either maintain or it should improve from year on onwards? Uh, so, Arman, uh, uh, I'll reiterate that. Uh, Margin, what we have got FI24, these are sustainable on a long term basis and we don't don't uh, see any issue. However, on a quarterly basis, there may be some, some variation uh, depending upon the commodity pricing. But for full year basis, we are confident that these numbers are sustainable. Uh, uh, I think there was another question which was related to a fixed percentage of EBITDA margin, which I, uh, I said I cannot comment on that fixed percentage. It was double digit. But yeah, we are aspiring for that. Uh, but these level of margins are sustainable on a full year basis. Uh, for quarterly, there could be some variation, again, depending upon the raw material pricing. As I also mentioned in my earlier answer, that there are few levers available for uh, margin expansion, both in distribution side as well as in operation side on which we are working. And those levers will help us to expand our margin uh, further from here. So that gives confidence to uh, get double digit EBITDA margin on a sustainable basis. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next question comes from the line of Himanchu. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thanks. Sir. I just also had uh, just one uh, key question. If you could talk about the marketing and uh, promotion spends for the year and what's the outlook on this? Because I believe to boost growth we and in light of competition, uh, we might have to increase our uh, marketing and promotion spends and any impact in case you would see on margins uh, on that front, sir. Last year, our marketing spend was close to 1.25%. This year, we are targeting to anywhere between 1.5 to 2%, and I don't think that will have any impact on the margin because that can be definitely uh, taken up by the extra sales what we generate through advertisement. So, no significant uh, gap should come because of increased advertisement cost. Mm -hmm. And and any any changes in the promotion uh, that you are seeing uh, maybe by the unorganized or local players which you need to match. Uh, has there been any significant change in the uh, channel margins or uh, promotions that you need to give out? No, so there, has no, there has been no change in the channel margin. We have definitely reduced the channel margin like we discussed earlier. But as the retailer margin, it depends from area to area and market to market. We might have to give few schemes depending on the competition but not significant enough, which can change anything. Understood, understood. And uh, so finally, uh, just one point on the overall, uh, you said uh, you are running at about 55%. So uh, there, there is no CAPEX, I believe, and cash flow generation remains strong for us. So in terms of capital allocation uh, going forward, I mean, uh, do, have we sort of, what is our plan like? I mean, uh, would we be thinking of in, I mean, uh, returning more cash to the shareholders or maybe are we looking at some inorganic opportunities as well? We have a formal policy for this uh, and uh, we will use this capital in the best possible uh, way to maximize the shareholders' wealth. So no, no concrete uh, plan yet. But we are evaluating uh, the best possible utilization of the surplus cash. Great. All right, sir. That that would be all. Uh, all the best to you. Uh, I think we have one more question in the queue. Uh, Raju, if you can take that. Thank you. Next question comes to the line of Ankit Minocha with MRLR Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to check on the pricing environment uh, that you've seen with the competition and uh, for the coming one or two quarters, are you also looking at uh, any sort of price increases from your end? We are not looking at any price increase, increases right now because there is a lot of competition still in the market. If you can sustain the same pricing, that would be better for us. But with the few products that we are launching in the premium segment, in probably this or next quarter, we might get a better realization. Okay, and uh, thanks for that. And uh, sorry, I was a little late, so I might have missed this. Uh, have you shared any uh, sales and uh, EBITDA margin uh, guidance for the next year? We are targeting double digit growth and EBITDA. So we already explained the Yeah, we, we are just targeting to maintain or slightly enhance the margin. Uh, and uh, going forward, as I mentioned uh, in my earlier remarks, that there are two levers available, especially on the distribution and operation side, uh, which will help us to further expand our EBITDA margin from here. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. We have reached the end of question and answer session. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you everyone for joining us on this call today. Very interesting set of questions. We look forward to interacting with you again. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Systematics Institutional Equities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.